Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And as a couple, we rank our favorite nerd movies. We give you a male perspective and a female perspective. And we're starting with the Marvel Universe, the MCU. That's the Marvel Cinematic Universe for yes. those who might not be as big of a dork as we are. <laughs> uh, so you might be asking yourself, why should I care what these two think? Well, the fun thing is we also care what you think. Mm -hmm. And we're such big dorks that we love discussing the Marvel movies. We love debating the, the points on the Marvel movies, whether it's like points in their favor or points against them. Where did Marvel go right? Where did they go wrong? Um, and we developed our own scoring sheet and we came up with that so that we can give each movie a score and that way we can rank them based on their score. And you can go ahead and download that or fill it out online down in the description below this video. And your score will actually contribute to the overall score of a movie. Yeah. So if we're in disagreement, as we have been in the past on some movies, you might be the deciding factor for which one of us is right. Now on to our review for Avengers Age of Ultra. Our first category is lead male, and in this case, lead male, likability. Once again, we decided with the Avengers, our two lead characters, even though they're not a male and a female, we made it Iron Man and Captain America. I gave them both a score of four. I said I want both these guys my inner circle of friends. Okay. Um, I think both of them have separately achieved this before, and I, I mean now they just they've they've got that glory, and so they're probably gonna have to screw things up to lose it. I think I think they screwed things up. I think that making a, a murder bot is screwing things up, and I think that Tony Stark drops for me. <laughs> Tony Stark's now a two in this movie. Oh. Yeah, I, I it's not bad. I'd grab a beer with him. All right, he lost some trust in this one. He did not tell everyone about Ultron. He hid it from people because he didn't think that people would approve of it. Okay, so, that, I, I would agree with you on that. So I, I had to drop him down to a two. And I didn't give him three. So I gave Captain America a three in this. I thought he was a badass. And that leads us to lead male and lead male bangability. So for me, once again, they both get a zero. Um, not a big shocker there. Uh, they're both very attractive, but they get a zero for me. Both these characters in the past have earned a five, which is the highest score. That's This is more yeah. than a bang. Uh, they both dropped to a four. I mean, they oh, didn't drop. Oh this no, only a four. They only get to have a bunch of sex with you just one day instead of like you know for weeks on end. Next up is lead male, lead male relatability. I gave them a zero. I gave them both a zero. I thought that once again because of their personalities didn't shine as much. They were more the superheroes. I'm gonna take the opposite end. For me, they both got a score of three, which is Ooh. I think it's the best, and I also put in my mind worst parts of me. Um, I think the fact that Iron Man really screws up, like, he <laughs> when do you ever screw up? All right, that's now you're thinking of me as Iron Man. <laughs> no, but I think it's that thing of like these guys have always done the right thing. They've always put the right foot forward, been perfect, known what to do, handled each situation. I don't know situation. if Iron Man's always been perfect. I don't know if Tony Stark's always been perfect. I mean. If you asked him, he's been perfect. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, but I think in this, it was the fact that they monumentally screwed up. Yeah. And they were having to clean up their mess that mm -hmm. suddenly humanized them for me. Moving on to the villain. Now, the villain in this was Ultron. His end goal is basically to bring about world peace, which sounds all well and good until you figure out that he wants to do that by killing everybody. It actually reminds me of an X-Files episode where they have a genie and they ask for one of his wishes was world peace, Mulder's. And everyone dies. Like, he's the only one left in the world. And he's, she goes, what'd you do? She's like, well, this is world peace. You know, it's peaceful. I'm the nerd that watches X-Files, and you just referenced X-Files. I did. Baby, I, I did. love you so much. <laughs> I know, I know. This is why I'm I know what my baby likes. <laughs> so. How many people does this villain's end goal affect? Well, it affects Avengers, obviously, but, I mean, he wants to destroy everybody in the world all human life, so it affects the entire world. So he got a three for me. Yep, same here. A three for sure. World's health and happiness is at stake in the hands of Ultron. Yeah. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? I'm cheating. Why are you cheating? Why are you cheating? Look at your own paper. You look at your own paper first, and then I will tell you my score. I'm just curious. Um, so I gave Ultron a score of two. I said that he's equal to the hero. Ooh, I gave him a three. I thought he was stronger than the hero. He kicks their butt in the beginning. He's not even fully formed, and he just completely ambushes them and kicks the crap out of the out of the Avengers. Sure. But, so. It's fair. I'm sticking to two. It's more than fair, it's right. Anyway, how much do you care about the villain? I gave him a zero. I didn't really care about Ultron at all. I didn't like James Spader's voice as Ultron. I wanted a more menacing voice than James Spader. I didn't like the, the, the pithy, 
witty, sarcastic Ultron. I actually really like James Spader in the role. Um, <laughs> we're differing a lot on this we one. We are differing a lot. What's that going to do to our score? Who knows? Uh, I actually gave him a score of two. I said he's annoying enough that, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing him dead. Next up for the villain is bangability. And I don't want to bang a murder robot, so I gave him a zero. Yeah, I mean, as much as I enjoy James Spader in the role, and I, I thought that his humor and everything was great, I mean, I, I really loved what he did with the role. I just... He's a murder robot, so... I, I don't think you need to justify it that much that you gave him a zero. You really tried to... I'm no. sorry, Ultron. I, 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 don't don't get your hurt feelings hurt by this, but I just don't want to bang you. I think that's okay. No, I just... Yeah, well, anyway, I don't want to bang him. Yeah, I think so. people will forgive you. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying because it's, you know, like, I've just talked him up, so then to be like, yeah, but no. I feel like I need to say it. Uh, no, I don't think you do. I don't think you do need to say it. I don't think you... Fine. Our next category are side characters. Now, there were a lot of side characters in this one because it's an Avengers film. If we put our two lead characters as Captain America and Iron Man, then the rest of the Avengers got to be in side characters. We have Thor. We have Hulk. We have Black Widow. Vision. Scarlet Witch. Dr. Helen. Hawkeye. Quicksilver. For me, Thor got a one. Hulk. Scarlet Witch. Quicksilver. Helen Shu. She was the scientist that came up with the... Uh, regeneration pod or whatever that you know fixed hawkeye and made the vision and uh yeah so and vision as well um vision comes out at the end i like vision i like these characters but they were really just there for the plot um they weren't super humorous i think they really toned down the humor for hulk and and uh thor my uh one scoring side characters were jarvis uh Dr. Vision. yeah vision Dr. Helen Cho, and uh, Bruce Banner. I gave Hawkeye, Thor, Scarlet Witch, and Black Widow a score of two, saying that they made our heroes more likable, redeemable, and relatable. And that was in large part because of that um, reveling party after they have success in the first mission where they're all trying to lift Thor's hammer and they're mm. sitting around having drinks. And it's kind of like... Scarlet Witch wasn't there, though. For Scarlet Witch and uh, her brother, what I liked about what they brought to the table for the heroes was they hated them. Mm -hmm. They wanted to kill them. And they changed as they got to know them better, which I think that speaks very highly of our, okay. of our heroes. All right, I buy that. Uh, but Quicksilver actually gave a 3-2 for humor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I gave a 2 to Black Widow. Uh, I, you know, I... Uh, Black Widow is one of my favorite Avengers. She was great in this, and but she only got a two. She didn't, she wasn't as much for the humor again because they focused more on the love story with her and Bruce Banner. For me, for the three, I gave it to Hawkeye. I thought Hawkeye was hilarious in this one, and especially towards the end when he's got that arrow and he's pointing it at Quicksilver and he goes, yeah. "Nobody know, <laughs> nobody know." Yeah, that was great. Next up is plot, where basically we're going over generally. How successful was this plot in keeping you entertained? I get it too. It was entertaining, but it was predictable. I gave it a score of three. Uh, so I did give it higher than oh. a two. Um, I said it was deliciously unexpected. I did not see dropping a country. Um, yeah. And... So Ultron's plan wasn't clear. I'll, I'll give you that. Ultron's plan was, was a surprise. Next up is female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? Now, we have some powerful women in this one. Scarlet Witch is arguably the most powerful character of all of them. Uh, the, the, her powers are just super intense. They're I mean, amazing. Yeah, she can control people's minds. Not control people's minds, but she can like alter their, their minds, make them see visions. Yeah, she's got telekinesis. She yeah. can move stuff. Yeah, so she's she's very powerful in this one. Black Widow, obviously, and Maria Hill. Uh, she she has a brief appearance in this one. She didn't make her side characters list, but um, she was still in there And at the end. She had some moves. I, that's why I gave it a three. I said without a strong move from a female, victory would not have happened. So I gave female empowerment a score of four. I said that the female is a true hero. For Scarlet Witch, she's entrusted with protecting basically like the switch that's going to drop the planet um, while everybody else is trying to uh, get the civilians off. So for me, the fact that she was so powerful that she was left with the most singularly important job so that everyone else can get the civilians to safety mm -hmm. shows how fundamental she was to the success of the plan and how how powerful and amazing and badass she is. Up next is soundtrack. How'd you like the tunes in this film, huh? Yeah, yeah I gave it a one. Yeah. Mainly for the Avengers theme song. Exactly. Next up is humor. I think they pushed some of the humor in, in this when Cap uh, says language and then 
Iron Man calls him out for it. I thought that was kind of lame. I was like, oh, Captain America's the square. Okay, you definitely laughed at that one in theaters, though. I'm just going to recall. No, me. I did yes, not. You, I totally oh, you did so not. Did. I totally did you not. You did, because when we came out, you're like, That's oh, always bothered I'm me. Angry. No. That's always bothered me. He laughed. No, I didn't. He did laugh. But for me, the humor score got a, got a 29. So it got higher than I thought it would. Basically, if you just toss out a bunch of jokes in there, out of there, you know, some of them are going to hit. So they had a lot of jokes, and I got a 29. But there were a lot of misses, too. I gave humor a score of 40. I just haven't watched Age of Ultron a whole lot. So I think, for me, some of the jokes were unexpected. So visual effects. Um, oh, it looks like you're going to trash visual effects. I'm not going to trash it. <laughs> I'm just... I'm not going to lie. I'm disappointed. Oh, wow. I'm disappointed because it was so obviously CGI. My score was a 2. And I gave visual effects a 2 as well. Usually, I have, to, I have to fight you on this one, but I'm glad that we both agree on visual effects. Our next category is Love Story. Now, in The Last Avengers, we did the love story was a friendship, a bromance between Iron Man and Captain America. But they made such a big deal about Bruce Banner and Black Widow having a love story in this. That was such a focal point of this film that that was the one that we, that we chose. We chose that as our love story. And it, for me, it felt completely flat. I gave it a zero. I thought it wasn't believable at all. I gave it a score of one. Um, I said it puts a little bow on everything. And that brings us to dialogue. Dialogue got a one. It almost got a zero for me, where because there were a lot of bad lines, there were a lot of cheesy lines, there were a lot of corny lines I didn't like, but there were also some ones that saved it. Like I said, with Hawkeyes, you know, no one would know. I gave it a two with quality memorable one-liners. In large part because of that final scene, Hawkeye's line mm -hmm. came to mind with that. So one of the saving graces for this film for me was the action sequences. Now, the, there were five action sequences in this movie, and I gave them a three. I said I uh, couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way. My total score for action sequences was a 15. For me, I give Avengers Age of Ultron a score of two for its action sequences, and since there were five, that brings my total action score to a 10. Visual effects and action sequences they will often help or hurt each other. Yeah, those go hand in hand with you a lot. And the fact that I was so aware of the CGI, I just, like, this is an action, this is a computer. And finally, we have heart. So I give it a two. I give it a three, and I gotta say, this entirely goes to Quicksilver, um, mm. with strong supporting moves by both Scarlet Witch and Hawkeye. My final score for Avengers Age of Ultron was 77. Mine was a 109. But... but we had to deduct some points. I was originally going to deduct five points just for boring and dullness and, uh, yeah, kind of checking out in the film, but Bethany wanted to go higher, which was surprised. There were twice in this movie that I just wrote down minus five. So my total score for Avengers then fell to a 67. And mine fell to a 99. Which gives it a total score of 83, which puts it just above Thor The Dark World and just below Iron Man 3, which I think is pretty fair. We agreed that, you know, despite the difference in our score, we thought that's probably a decent place for this to fall. So go ahead and download our scoring sheet down in the description of this video, or you can fill it out online and post your score on Avengers Age of Ultron. Our score was an 83. But that's definitely not definitive. Nope.